Hi everybody, I wanted to go through some of the processes in PixInsight that you might find useful when you're first starting out. So I have here a stacked image uh, which was taken with a DSLR. It's an RGB image and um, I actually stacked it in Deep Sky Stacker, although PixInsight is capable of doing stacking, I haven't quite mastered that bit yet. Um, so um, this is the TIFF file which has come straight out of Deep Sky Stacker. The way PixInsight works is that it applies a series of processes under the process tab to an image so you choose which of the processes you want and then you apply them to the image itself so i've picked out some um, processes here and i've just put them on the top now i found these ones are pretty useful to end up getting a reasonably good uh, starting point for your image so the first one we're going to do is screen transfer function now the screen transfer function here allows you to stretch this image and um, it's got this funny little nuclear symbol here. So if you slide your image and then hit the nuclear symbol, so it's applying that, you can see that um, we've got the veil there and we've got various features in this image that we need to improve, such as the noise. It's kind of a dark area here. Um, so the background's not completely flat. And um, uh, the interesting thing about PixInsight is it's not actually changed anything on the actual image yet at all. This is uh, literally just doing it in a kind of um, preview stretch. So anything we do to this at the moment um, has not actually stretched the image at all. So the first process that we're going to do to this image is we're going to do the background neutralization. Now I'm literally going to change absolutely nothing on this. Um, I'm literally just going to drag this little triangle at the bottom here onto the image and let go. And then PixInsight does its processing and it's now done the background neutralization. So we're now finished with that process and I've now brought it back up to there. The next process is color calibration and we're going to follow exactly the same principle again. Um, I'm not going to change anything in here and I'm just going to go down to the bottom left hand corner to the triangle and drop that onto the image. Okay. So that's good. So we're now done with that particular aspect, which is color calibration. Now the next um, window is SCNR. Now you can see there's kind of a green haze on this image from a DSLR. And what we want to do is remove that and SCNR will do that. So again, I'm not going to change anything here. I'm just going to drag and drop that onto the image. Great, so that's removed the green haze that we have here. So again, we can close SCNR. Now in this particular image, we've got millions of stars, which once it's been properly stretched and properly processed will probably become quite overpowering. So what we're going to do now is a little bit of masking. We're going to generate a star mask looking at this image here. So in PixInsight, what you have to do is tell it the shadows and midtones. And the way you do that is we go back to the screen transfer function and you click on this little spanner here. And then if you hover over this one here, it shows you the shadows clipping. So if you select those and copy them and then click OK, unfortunately you can't copy that across and then paste it here. You've got to click OK. And then we'll paste it in here. Paste. And then back to the spanner and copy the midtone values here. Copy, click OK, go in there. So we've now put those in there. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to, because it's such a big image, I'm going to create a little preview by clicking on this preview window. And then you draw a box where the stars are, click on preview, and there we go, we can see them there. And because that's smaller, it'll take less time to process. So I'm just going to apply that. And that'll be quicker to apply and create a star mask. So there's our star mask, which is basically these images. Now they, that looks quite, quite severe. So I might actually close that and create a different mask. I'm just to lower um, sorry, increase the threshold slightly. And then give it another go again on the preview. Okay, that looks pretty good. And if I resize it to the correct size, you should see that it matches up with 
are stars. So it's a little, they're a little bit bigger, but I'm not too worried about that. Okay, so let's get rid of our preview. So preview and delete all. So we're back to our image, and now we're going to apply these settings to the actual image. Now this will take a while to process because it's such a big image. So I'll join you again once it's finished. Okay, great. So we now have our star mask, which is here. Now, the way in which we apply this star mask to the image is interesting in Pix Insight because you would literally click on this tab here and you drag it and then drop it on the side. Now, in Pix Insight, we don't want to close that. We just want to make it small and leave it there. So anything that is red is protected. And anything that is not red is not protected. But of course, we can't see from our image here what's happening. So we need to go to masks. Sorry, selecting the image first, mask, and then show mask. And so we know because it's this funny brown color that there is a mask applied. So what we're going to do now is star reduction. Now star reduction in PixInsight is called morphological transformation. And what we're going to do, I'm literally going to drag and drop that over and see what has happened. I'm not going to change any settings at the moment. Wow, that's really good. Okay, so I'm just going to undo and hopefully we'll see that the stars become bigger. Yeah, so the intensity of the stars, you can see quite visibly there. So they've been reduced quite substantially. I'm actually quite happy with that at the moment. We can always apply it again later if we need to. That's it. So we've now done our morphological transformation. So I'm now going to get rid of that mask. So mask, remove mask. So the mask, although we've still got the star mask here, which we created a few moments ago, we're just not applying it on there at the moment. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to apply some noise reduction to this image. Um, and for that, I'm going to use the TGV denoise. Now, I obviously don't want um, to lose any of the luminosity in this image. So I'm going to select the image and then with this button here, I'm going to extract the luminance from the image and with that we can use it as a mask. So we've got our um, new image here and if I stretch that you'll see that all of this information is still in the image which we want to protect. So we, just as we did with the star mask I'm now going to drag this and apply it to our image so we now know that because that's gone that funny orangey brown that we've got a mask on there as well so if I reduce that so that's our luminance mask there and if I was to select the image first mask and then show mask we can see that everything that's red is protected so we want to invert that mask so we can now see this little red dot there. There's very, um, basically all of the details are protected, but the background is not. So what we now need to do is look at our TGV denoise. So again, we're going to create a um, preview. So to select that, I've got to select that there. Which, this is our preview and you can see it's quite a noisy image. So what I'm going to do is just drag that across and apply it to this image. Now you can see that's very severe and if I go to this little button here it allows me to undo what we did to the preview and redo it quickly. So that's a bit severe so I'm just going to reset the preview which is the next button along. I'm going to reduce the amount here. I'm going to go to 3.25 and apply again. Again it's still a bit severe that you can see that it is reducing that noise so we'll reset our preview again I'm going to reduce it a bit further I'm 
I think we're getting closer. So I'm going to undo that. And what I'm actually going to do, I'm to lower this value here, which has the, the effect of moving the decimal point. You can see there. So it's just moving the decimal point across. So I'm just going to try again just to see if I'm. Okay, we're getting there now. So it's a bit more subtle, but I'm, I'm quite liking that. I might just increase it a bit more. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to just go to my um, preview and delete all and then I'm going to apply this to the image. Great, that looks really good. It's a lot cleaner looking so I'm pretty happy with that. So that's TVG denoise. So what we're going to do now is go to mask and remove the mask. So we've now removed the mask that we had on the image and you can actually zoom in and you can see although it's a little bit blotchy a lot of the noise has been removed from this image so I'm quite happy about that. Um, so the next process I'm going to use is to try and even out this background a bit. So we're going to go to dynamic background extraction. And what we have to do is select our image and we get this cross across the image here. Now the first thing we have to do is get it to generate some samples where it thinks the sample should be placed. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on sample generation and generate. And then let the process actually go through looking at the image and putting these little crosses where it thinks it should have the samples. Now you can see we haven't got very many there, so what I'm going to do now is change the tolerance here to 2.5 and then click Generate again. We can see here we've got more appearing already. There's quite a lot there in fact. So I'm going to try and increase the number of samples because the more samples you have the better. So I'm going to go to say 15 samples and then Generate again. And now we've got quite a few samples, which is really good. I might actually go up to three on this. And just see. Great, so we've now got a few more samples. Now we have a bit of a job now going through the whole image and moving any of these samples which are actually on what we can see as the nebulosity in this image. Now you can either just hover over them until you get a little arrow and then move it or you can click on them and hit delete and they will disappear but it's better probably to just move these now what you're aiming for is to try and move them to an area where they're in the background so they're not actually on a star because we don't want it to pick up a light area or a bit of nebulosity um, because that's the information which we want in the image. So you just have to go through and find all of these individual areas where basically it's not showing you any stars or any nebulosity. And this can take a very long time. So I'm going to go through this as fast as I can to try and identify where all of these are. Okay, so I've been through um, a lot of these and just selected all the ones that I don't want and I've removed some of them and I've moved some of them as well. So the next aspect of this is to go to target image correction and then we want it to subtract 
the background from this image. So I'm now going to drag the triangle onto the image and let it do its processing. Now we can see that PixInsight has actually created two new images. So that was our original image which we've just been processing. Then it created this image which is the background it's removed and if we stretch this we can see that it's removed all of these areas like this on the image. And then the new image which we've now got here, if we stretch this looks a bit like that which I have to say it always scares me a bit because it looks quite scary and really noisy and really horrible but this is now the image that we're going to be working on so we can actually close out the background because we don't need that and this image we could either just lower that in case we want to come back to that I'm just going to put it there just in case we need it for later on so this image here is the one that we are now working on. So we've now done our dynamic background extraction, so we can take that away. So the next process is to um, go from a linear phase to a non-linear phase. So we're actually going to stretch our image now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to remove the screen transfer function by hitting this key here. So it goes back to our darker image and then we're going to go to histogram transformation. Now histogram transformation is where we start stretching our image and this will actually have an effect. Now the lovely thing about histogram transformation is that you can do it on a preview first and get it roughly where you want it to be. And the preview is that little circle button down there. So here's our preview and what we can do now is we can actually stretch our image and we can see the changes pretty much real time just have to be careful I don't start to clip the blacks on this but we can start to see the information in our image coming out And once we're happy with our preview, we can then apply it. So we'll then take the preview off and close that. And then I'm going to apply that to the image. So that's going to be our first stretch of the image. And then I'm going to reset the histogram tool, put a preview on again, and now I'm going to restretch the image again. that off, take off our preview and then reapply that to the image. So now I'm just going to go into curves transformation and this is where we can pull up some of the curves on this to increase the brightness of it and also lower the background noise again a little bit and luckily it has a preview as well. So going to curves transformation I'm just going to take away the screen transfer function back up there and so we're on the preview and I'm just going to try and bring out some more of that detail don't want to clip the blacks too much because this l bottom part here has some amazing detail which I want to try and preserve. Now I am going to be cropping this image as well so I just need to be careful. See I think that's okay. 
So just taking off the preview and then applying that to the image. Okay, that's looking quite good. Now I'm just going to go back into histogram transformation and reset that. So just lowering the levels a bit and then at that point, but again, I just don't want to clip things. Now I am going to crop this as well. Apply that to the preview, turn off the preview and then apply it. Okay, so we can now see that we've applied that histogram transformation to this image. So just closing histogram transformation. Now the next bit is the fun bit. This is where we get to bring out the colors a lot more. So we go into color saturation and we need to click on the bits where we can see the colors we like. So the first thing we have to do is again, go to our circle for a preview and then click on the colors and it will actually show us roughly where the colors are so how much we've got to pull out. So I'm just going to draw a few dots on this. And then we increase those levels in the image. Okay, that's good. And now we need to bring out the blues. So we've got our blue is around there. So let's put additional blue dots in. And now we want to bring out the saturation in the blue. Okay, that's good. Let's turn that off and get rid of our preview and then I'm going to apply that to our image. Okay, great. I'm just going to go back into curves again and reset that and see if we can, now that we've got more of the color in it in the image, see if we can bring out a bit more detail in the image. And then apply that. Brilliant. So I think I'm pretty much there now. I've not been able to get rid of all of this noise around here and what I'd like to do now is crop the image so that I've just got the veil going across. So the process that we use for that is dynamic cropping. Oh, it's telling me I've already got a dynamic process open, the background extraction, so I'll just close that. And then go back into processes and dynamic crop. And now I just need to work out my area I wish to crop on this. I'm just going to move it across. That looks good. And then the green tick here will apply that. And that's our image so far. So I just want to see if I can get a bit more um, a bit more of the nebulosity out of this and the tool I'm going to use for that is the HDR multiscale transformation. And I'm not going to change any settings on here. I'm literally going to drag that across and drop it on and see if it can improve the image at all.
So it's removed some of the intensity of the reds there, but I actually quite like what it's done. I'm going to keep that as it is. That's good. So that is going to be my final image from PixInsight. And the next thing to do is save this particular image off. So you go File, Save As. Save. And then you go 16-bit and save. And that's the finished image. Now it is quite noisy, this image, but I'm reasonably happy with that. There we go. That's um, just a very basic PixInsight uh, workflow. Yeah.